Praise the Lord, church. If we could all stand together tonight, we're going to go ahead and give God praise tonight. Amen. Hasn't God been good to you? Amen. I believe God's presence is still in this place from the service we had at 6 o'clock. So I believe that God is just waiting for us to tap in. Whatever you need tonight, God can do it for you tonight. Let's draw near unto God. Let's go ahead and pray and just tap into the presence of God tonight. Lord Jesus, we love you. We worship you, God. We thank you that your presence is already in this place. God, we thank you for what you're going to do tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, that we can come into your presence, oh God. We pray that you'd have your way among us, oh God. We pray that you heal every sickness tonight, Jesus. God, we cast out cancer in Jesus' name, Lord. We cast out all devils in Jesus' name, God. Remove all hindrances, oh God, from our minds tonight, God. Let your will have its way, oh God. Let your spirit have its way among us. Come on, church, let your voices out. God, start praying to God. God, we love you. God, we worship you. And Lord, we submit to your will tonight, God. We can do nothing without you, Lord. We love you, oh God. We thank you for the love that you've given to us, oh God. We pray, God, that you would cleanse us one more time in your presence, oh God. Cleanse our minds and our hearts, oh God, and make us pleasing to you. We want your presence, oh God. We've come here expecting God to move. We know it's Wednesday, God, but we thank you that you're the same God on Wednesday if you are on Sunday. You're the same every day, Jesus, and we thank you, oh God. We thank you, God, that anything can happen tonight, God, because you are a God of right now. Whatever we need, Jesus, you can do it right now, God. We love you, Jesus. We worship you. Give God praise. Go ahead. Make a joyful noise unto God. Magnify God tonight. God, we worship you. Jesus, you are wonderful tonight, God. All that we have to give, God, we're going to give it to you tonight because you are worthy, oh God. You are worthy of all the praise. Are you thankful to be in God's presence tonight? Hasn't God been good to somebody tonight? Express your thankfulness to God. God, we thank you, Jesus. God, we pray for these musicians tonight, God. Minister, oh God, let your spirit be among them. These ministers, oh God, let your spirit move through them, oh God. Have your way in us as a congregation, oh God. Among all of us, your people, God, have your way among all of us, Jesus. Whatever your will is, we pray that your will would be done today, oh God, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we praise you. Let's magnify God tonight, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you come to worship the King of Kings tonight? Hallelujah.
great things. Sing it again, hallelujah. Our God sits high and he looks low. He's above it all. He's unshakable. You have done. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says we serve a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has done great things, and he's going to continue to do great things. Amen. It doesn't matter your situation tonight. Amen. You may come in here with a knee. You may come in here, amen, sick in your body. Whatever you may be feeling tonight. You may be brokenhearted. I don't know. But if you have a need tonight, our ministry team is here to pray with you. Amen. We want more than anything, amen, that you receive a breakthrough tonight. And if you have a need tonight, if you stepped into this building knowing that God is a supplier of every one of our needs, amen, if you have a need today, would you please come forward, amen. Our ministry is here to pray with you in in Jesus' name. I've searched the world where he couldn't feel me. Man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough then you came along and put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love Have you found that to be true? That there's nothing better than our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sing, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. Show you my weakness. My failures and flaws. Lord, you sing them all. And you still call me friend. Because the God of the Lamb. He's so calm down in your valley. The God of the valley. And there's not a place. There's not a place. Where mercy and grace, and grace won't, won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing. Oh, there's nothing. Better than. Better than you. There's nothing. There's nothing better, better than, than you, Jesus. Lord, there's 
Now why don't we lift up our hands and give him praise? Hallelujah, Jesus. There's nobody praying than you, Jesus. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ourselves. You turn shame into glory. Glory. of it tonight. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad to be in the house of God on Wednesday night? Amen. Hallelujah. We are at the hump. Amen of the week. And amen. It is so good to be in the presence of God tonight. And we want to give you an opportunity to worship God in your giving tonight. So um, we have several ways that you can do that tonight. Uh, you, this, you can look on the screen behind me. Amen. If you if you uh, want to give via cash or check, we have our ushers here. To, if you need a contribution envelope for that, they are here passing. Would you please just raise your hand? Amen. And while we're doing that, I want to make some. We have some announcements. Amen. Where are all the young people at? Is there some young people in the house tonight? I said, where are all the young people at? All right, young people. There we go. Amen. Texas Youth Conference. Amen. It's, it's coming up Ju Friday, July the 30th. There you go. Come on. Texas Youth. It's going to be awesome. God's going to do something great. Amen. Amen. That's, that's Friday, July the 30th. Uh, Texas Youth Conference. The shuttle bus leaves at 4 p.m. 
All right, at 4 p.m., it's $20 to get in, and you need money for food. All right, you need money for food. So make sure you bring that. All right. Uh, so uh, also October the 29th and October the 30th, we have a ladies' retreat. This is going to be off campus uh, with Carla Burton. Spots are limited. So claim your spot with $25 deposit as soon as possible. $25 deposit for that, for your deposit to claim your spot. The spots are limited. Please see Sister Callie Carey for details. Amen. The deadline is coming soon. So make, make sure you get with Sister Callie for, to do that. Okay. Singles. All the singles in the house sign up for the foyer for ministry. A connection to events. Amen. And see Sister Kelly Rawlinson. Amen. Sister Kelly Rawlinson will be at the Next Steps desk for that. So all the single people in the house tonight. Amen. Make sure you sign up for that tonight. All right. So if you have your offering, why don't we stand to our feet? Amen. And let us lift up our offering. Let us pray for our offering. God, we thank you, Lord. My God, because we are given what you have given back. We give back to you what you have given to us, God. And we ask, Lord, that you, my God, would bless the gift and the giver, God, tonight. Lord, that you would multiply it for your kingdom, Lord. In the name of Jesus, this is for your honor and for your glory tonight, God. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let us pass forward and deposit our offering tonight.
yes. He is worthy of our praise. Give him praise right now. Because we are here. And we all are here. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We need you, Lord. As we stand, I want you to look at the person next to you and tell them that you love them. And I want you right now to tell them that you will not leave them behind because you're all one body. And that's what we are. And that's what keeps us bonded. So we come at this moment in time. I want to let you know something. One month from now, I came to the church in that white building over there. And it's 19 years later. I am still here. I didn't see them all here. And I'm grateful for all of y'all. Look at my family now. Look at it, the size of it. I thank you. I thank you so much. All righty. You may be seated. Okay, I welcome the people on the uh, Revival Radio as the ones who are being seen in Columbia. And i like you to give them a hand. Thank you very much. There you go. All right. All right. At this time, I need to ask the ushers to come around. I don't know if we're still doing it with the stickers or whatever. If you need a sticker, you're not, not going to be approached. You can. But evidently, it's not. We still love each other. All right. Good. <laughs> Now, at this time, I would like to ask anyone, are they here for the first time and did not receive a card for the first time visitor? I mean, guest, rather. <laughs> All right. Anyone for the second time guest? Okay. All right. All right. And uh, we kind of put it in this way here. Please come back and see us as a guest, at least six times and you will at least have a chance to see who we are I came here six times and now I'm here 19 years later <laughs> so I'm really comfortable with the love I receive here thank you so much all right all right I would like to uh I would like uh, as I uh, call out your name I want you just to wave your hand we just like to know where you're at so we can come and greet you. We don't want you to get up and make a speech or nothing like that. <laughs> but we'll do it this way. Okay, John and Kelly Miller, first time guests. There we are. There we go. Okay. Thank you. And Santo, make sure I'm clicking it since right. Vidal, first time guest. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Raise your hand, please. He has them. Okay. All right. And I would like the first time guests, Jenny and Donnie uh, no Nolan. Am I right, Nolan? Nolan? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, at this time, I will we put five minutes on the clock and uh, try to keep it down, you know, to five minutes. If not, just hug a little longer. I just can't do it in here. <laughs> all right. Thank you. And have a, thank you very much. Let's all stand. Here we go.
bountiful Where your streams of abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Cause every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise And when the darkness closes in love Still Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise. There's nothing quite like the name of the Lord. Psalmist David wrote in Psalms, I believe, 6. He said, oh, how excellent is thy name, O Lord, in all the earth, who hast set thy glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars that thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over all the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent, how excellent is thy name. Amen. There's nothing quite like the name of Jesus. You know, there are a lot of names that, that hold weight in our world, names that when invoked, some, some uh, spark images of reverence, others fear, others hatred. But when you speak the name of Jesus, it does something that no other name can do. It invokes a power, supernatural power that comes from another world. When you, you can even whisper the name of Jesus and all hell begins to tremble. All authority is given to that powerful name of Jesus. 
I'm so thankful that not only do I know the name of Jesus, not only do I know who Jesus is, but that name has been applied to my life. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you've never been baptized in water, specifically in the name of Jesus, I would encourage you before you leave today to get rebaptized this time in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 19, the disciples of John encountered uh, uh, the apostle Paul and he asked a question about the Holy Ghost and they said we don't know whether there be any Holy Ghost we haven't heard about it and so we asked them how they were baptized they said under John's baptism remember John baptized in a description of Jesus there's coming one who who's the, the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to loose he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire amen that's what he was preaching preaching repentance but he never mentioned the name Jesus when he baptized folks. That's why the apostle Paul said, you need to get rebaptized. But this time in the name of the Lord Jesus, he commanded them to all get rebaptized. If you are a believer and you have been baptized before, but it wasn't with the name Jesus spoken. Maybe you were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Don't let anybody tell you, well, it doesn't matter it doesn't, you know, it's all, it all means the same thing. If it all means the same thing, it makes absolutely no sense for the Apostle Paul to command those disciples of John to get rebaptized. Everybody needs to get baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is spiritual circumcision. It's a covenant cutting. It's, it's whenever we get into covenant with a holy God. And so I encourage you, if you've never been baptized in water in Jesus' name, it literally takes about maybe 10 minutes to change clothes, baptize, and you change back into your regular clothes. And you can walk out of this place tonight knowing I have obeyed the Lord. Amen. I've obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not all, everybody has. Amen. Just because you believe in Jesus doesn't mean you've obeyed Jesus. Amen. Jesus himself said not all have obeyed the gospel. The gospel is not something you just believe in. Mystical words and belief out there in the ether somewhere that you just latch on to through your mind and thinking and belief system but the gospel is something you must obey and so I encourage you get baptized in Jesus name if you've never received the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in an unknown tongue you can have that experience here today amen praise the name of the Lord there's nothing quite like the baptism of the Holy Ghost God bless you, you may be seated I, I want to take just a moment. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Rob McKee. I'm the senior pastor here at the Pentecostals. And uh, that sweet, beautiful lady right over there is my wife, Sharon. And we're thrilled that each of you are with us this evening. And I hope before you leave, you get a chance to connect with each of you. Um, and I encourage you, if you're looking for a church home, we, we do what we call stick six around here. We encourage people that uh, if you're looking for a home church, you never want to make a decision based on one service. Now, if you've already decided where the church for you, God bless you, glad to have you. Come on, jump on board. But if you're still on the fence a bit, I encourage you to stick six services because in six services, you'll get a good picture of what our, our values are, what our doctrine is, uh, you know, what's important to us, and uh, you'll be able to make an educated decision. And, uh, but it is so good to be in God's house this, uh, this evening, and it's good to see each of you here with us in, in the house of the Lord. Look at somebody beside you and tell them, I'm glad to be sitting next to somebody as, as beautiful and handsome as you are. Now, don't get yourself in trouble. You're sitting next to somebody you shouldn't be saying that to. Don't do that. Just say, somebody as awesome as you. How about that? All right. Amen. It's good to be here. Uh, for those, all of our members, it is good to be home. I am, uh, we, we have had a men's fishing trip, and, and Pop and I took a few extra days since we left much later than everybody else. We took a few extra days and went fishing. And, uh, you know, is it Matthew uh, 4 and uh, verse 17 where Jesus told uh, his disciples, he said, follow me and I'll teach you how to become a fisher of men. And so this week I was, I mean, he used the natural, natural uh, uh, occupation to make spiritual application. So this week we, we learned a little bit how to become a fisher of fish. And uh, we had a good time. But it is good to be home. We were in Alaska, beautiful, beautiful state of Alaska. Just a gorgeous place to visit. And, uh, but I am so thankful to be home. While I was there, just so everybody knows, yes, I went to church. I, I didn't take a tie, but I had to preach. On, uh, so ended up preaching while I was there. And I don't know what you do on your vacation, but preachers typically end up preaching somewhere on their vacation. 
And uh, we had great services, Pastor Mendenhall, also um, uh, another church in Kenai, wonderful uh, pastor, Pastor Wicker. And, uh, and so it is, it's just good to be home though. Amen. I'm so thankful for what the Lord did here this Sunday. Wow. Was it 21 received the gift of the Holy Ghost here Sunday? Amen. And uh, how many got baptized on Sunday? Okay, so 28 total received the Holy Ghost on Sunday. And how many baptized? Nine people baptized in the beautiful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. I think we ought to get excited about that. I really do. I mentioned this just a few moments ago in our Spanish service uh, that, uh, you know, I, I really feel like God is stirring something within our church, not just revival, not just people uh, being born again, added to, added to the church, but God is stirring up a hunger for ministry in our church. People are interested in doing something like never before. And uh, you can feel it in the atmosphere. And uh, I was watching the service from uh, Alaska. It was a big time difference there. Uh, but I was watching the services and, uh, you know, it just I felt God just prompt me that, that we need to be ready to answer the call of God. And remember uh, what the Apostle Paul said, anytime you take a step forward in ministry, there will always be a negative impact. There's always going to be something pushing back against it. The Apostle Paul said, every time I would do good, in uh, Romans chapter 8, anytime I would do good, evil is present with me. You hadn't seen evil in 15, 20 years. You take a step in the right direction and evil's ringing the doorbell. I mean, hey, evil, hello, I'm here. It's, it's amazing to me. It's just like the devil gives up on us until we start taking a step forward in ministry. So I want to tell you, if God is speaking to you about getting involved in ministry, expect a little resistance. Expect it. It's going to happen. Recognize it for what it really is. It's just the devil. He hates when you take a step forward. And so, uh, you know, a, a preach, an elder preacher once told me uh, this I, I, when I was much, much younger. I, I know I, I look pretty young right now, but I, when I was much younger, uh, he, he said, the devil doesn't care so much about anybody coming to church. He didn't really care if you come to church, but he does get concerned and become worried when you start actively serving in ministry. And uh, because he, he has no response to that. When you're serving in ministry, it, it changes the dynamics of your life. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Well, the anointing is always tied to the purpose of God. The anointing is the Christos. Anytime you see Christ throughout the Gospels, that word Christ is in reference to the work of Jesus Christ. So it's not Jesus' last name, in case you're wondering. That's not, you know, that wasn't his... his uh, Last name, it, it's, it's always referencing the work that he came to accomplish. And that same anointing rests upon you. You may not be a preacher, you may not be a Sunday school teacher, you may not play an instrument, sing, but there is a Christos that God has placed on your life for a work of the Lord. God has a ministry for every person in his kingdom. And so I wanna encourage you to exercise that. And as, as, as God begins to send revival to the church, you're going to feel that call, like, I need to do something. I want to do something. Don't dismiss it. That's not you. You may even encounter some resistance. You may think, oh, well, they don't want me, or somebody, they didn't respond to me the right way. You're, expect that. That's going to happen. That's the enemy trying to stop you from getting involved in ministry. But ignore it. God's got a job for you to do. Amen. Amen. Elbow your neighbor and tell him he's talking to you right now. And then turn back to the same person and tell him, not the preacher, God's talking to you. God's talking to you about getting involved in ministry. And so I encourage you to find a place to serve. And I want to just talk very briefly about two important areas right now that we have opportunity for you to serve in ministry. For some of you, throughout this revival, you're hearing about outreach a lot. And you're thinking, man, I'd kind of like to do that. I'd like to try that out. Well, there's two ways that you can do that. There's sign-up sheets out in the foyer. One is for outreach. Every day this week, Brother O'Rourke will be taking teams out. Um, and, and maybe you're timid. Maybe you're shy. You're thinking, I don't know if I could do that. Is it okay if they just kind of watch? 
if they come with you and, 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 and just watch Brother Rourke do what he does and you're going to see how easy it is to win people and get them to church. And so it's just, it's just conversation. You have conversations all day long. And so this is just conversation. And so uh, sign out up in the foyer and, and uh, Brother uh, Rourke's team will be, get with you and they'll uh, tell you when they're going out, what days they're going out. Um, and I believe it's every day, so uh, there's a lot of opportunities. So that's one thing. The second thing is we have, in the past, the history, the last 21 years of our church, we have had a lot of people win folks to God, okay? A lot of folks have brought people to church, seen them repent of their sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But there are a few shining stars, and I've got to admit, these people were on a whole different level of soul winning. One of those precious dear people, Sister Pam Aaronley. So good to have Brother Aaronley here tonight. And uh, we love and miss Sister Aaronley. Uh, past, was it 2015, Brother Aaronley? Yeah, 2015, this precious lady uh, went to be with the Lord. Probably one of the greatest soul winners. Her and Brother Aaronley worked as a team. Uh, some of the greatest soul winners that you have ever seen in your life. I am saying this conservatively, okay? For those of you that didn't know her, I'm being conservative. And there's a lot of people here that can verify this. Conservatively, Sister Pam and, and, uh, and, and uh, Brother uh, Abel Aaron Lay, conservatively, were responsible for over 200 people receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's, that's a conservative number. And you know what they did? They ran a bus. They ran a van every Sunday. They invited people to church and brought them to church. That's all they did. Uh, you know, they may have taught a Bible study, but the main thing that they did was get, provide transportation to get people here. And it's, it's a powerful way of, uh, of letting God use you to win souls. And so if you're interested, maybe you're not a Bible study teacher, you're kind of nervous about that, we have a sign-up sheet for those that are willing just to drive. If you can drive, you can follow GPS, you're, and, and you're 25 years or older, right? And, uh, and you have a, you know, a good driving record, uh, please. If your license has been revoked and you're over 25, please uh, find another ministry. But uh, hey, you gotta say it, you gotta say it. But. Uh, if, um, if you're able to do that, please sign up in the foyer and we're going to have someone coordinating all of that and, and connecting people with those that need a ride to church. It's an easy way, simple way of getting people in the house of the Lord. So if you're interested, uh, those two sign up sheets will be out in the foyer. Amen. Well, it's good to be in church tonight. Amen. I'm just so glad to be here. Looking forward to the word of the Lord. Amen. I, for those of you that are new to the Pentecostals, on Wednesday night we have sort of these breakout sessions. Not sort of, there actually are breakout sessions. And uh, uh, here in the main sanctuary, uh, we have Brother Char uh, Charles O'Rourke, our evangelist. Brother Charles O'Rourke is going to, going to be speaking. And um, uh, then we have several other classes. Preteen sanctuary, uh, Brother Jonathan Marshall is going to, uh, is taking all of our preteen, 10, 11, and 12 year olds through uh, the Search for Truth Bible study. So they're kind of getting a good foundation. And so uh, they're going to really enjoy that Bible study. And then uh, the youth and our college and career age group are combined tonight. And uh, the speaker is going to be Brother Marcus uh, uh, Terrio. And uh, he's going to be speaking on walking with God. Amen. But it is it's so good. Why don't we all stand together? I am looking forward to the services this weekend, and we are continuing with the revival with Brother O'Rourke. Things are going super, super powerful, and we want to keep it going. And so now's a good time to find a, a, a ministry of outreach, and, uh, and I'm thankful that Brother O'Rourke was able to rearrange his schedule and be with us for a couple more weeks. But we're glad to have him here. Amen. Amen. He is... He is a longtime friend of ours now. I guess we've known each other for quite a few years now. Uh, but it is. Uh, you're getting old. I'm not getting old. Yes, yes. It's like family. It's like family. We're so glad to have him here. And he's going to be speaking here in the main service. So if you are qualified in any of these other groups, the youth or the college and career age group, 
Um, that's going to be held, I believe, in the youth sanctuary. So it's out in the foyer, up the stairs, and just take the first left, and uh, you'll see the youth sanctuary down on the right. If uh, you're part of the preteen, it's going to be down that hallway straight until you can't go any further, until you run in the wall. Don't run in the wall, but just take a right right before you do, and that's the preteen sanctuary. And then here in the main service, when the youth are, and the hyphen are dismissed, if you want to move up and get a better seat, you can do that at this time. But all right, Brother Kay, uh, why don't you play some marching music? And God bless you as you go to your classes. Amen. Again, if you want to move up, get your Bibles ready. Amen. Brother Rourke, come and deliver the word of the Lord. Amen. Also good to have David and uh, Alo, um, Alto, Alo, did I say that right? David, where, is that you? Did I get close? I'm sorry, man. Forgive me. Ayo. I'm sorry. Amen. So good to have you guys here with us tonight. God bless you. Brother Rourke, would you come? Praise the Lord, everybody. I got this water and I'm feeling really good. All the energy it's given me. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this evening and feel the anointing of God that's in this place. It's funny that Pastor, and I'm not going to drag this on, Pastor, Pastor talked about staying here. He, he said, it's funny because the church I'm supposed to go to has always told me if you're in revival, stay, stay, stay. And he's given me that lecture and it's a, somebody that the McKees are friends with. And then until it, then all of a sudden, I was going to go there, and then they're like, they asked me a thousand questions. I said, I thought you told me to stay. Yeah, until it comes to our church. It's funny. It's just a joke. But he's far me staying here. He said, as long as you really had 28 people get the Holy Ghost, you could stay. <laughs> he said, but if you only had 10, you can't come. No, he's, he's pretty, but it's funny how that works. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord here. Um, we got a lot of work to do. I'm going to speak for a few moments. Um, a lot going on. I'm happy, uh, um, you know, Sister Doris um, was able to be here tonight. The crazy thing about Doris is uh, we, knock, we knocked on her door. And, well, she's coming outside to walk her dog, and we found her. Crazy story about Doris is um, she was here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and then, of course, tonight. But here's the crazy thing. When we found her, she had no idea. She didn't put it all together until she got here. She got baptized here in the Spanish church four years ago. Is that not crazy how God works? Four years ago she got, got God brought her home, and she's getting ready to move even closer to the church. So that's cool how God works. And literally she's moving this week. So we found her just in time because she's literally moving, and God, God is doing a work there. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. I'll get right into this. Um, it's good to see all of you here in the house of the Lord. And uh, you know what I love about coming to Katie? Can I just say this real quick and I'll preach? Uh, you know, you always know you're going to have, and I'm not trying to beat this drum, but some churches, they, Wednesday nights can be, you know, they can be what they are. But Sister McKee and, and the whole music department always keeps it, they give it their all. And watching them up here saying, and Sister McKee and the rest of the team, that just makes it feel good. I mean, I'm, you ought to be thankful that you go to a church where you know they're passionate, not just on Sundays, but on Wednesdays. You got a great pastor and pastor's wife. You, I don't know if you understand that, but you do. And be, you better be thankful. Because I could take you on a few road trips, and you'd be coming running back home real quick. Because I've been, never mind, we'll get back and start it. But I mean, I, I, you, there's been some places that, you know what, they're not passionate about souls. They're not passionate about revival. So be thankful that you are. And there's a lot of great churches. I don't mean that, but this is a great church here too. And they take Wednesday serious. One verse of Scripture 11, Romans 11, and it's, that's why I rattled. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Very simple. Let me ask you, we got several guests here. I told Pastor McKee, I think we got like six or seven uh, first-time guests here on a midweek service, which is great. We love, we're having revival. Great, see all these people with the Holy Ghost. We're going to have more get Holy Ghost Sunday. We're going to see keep 
continue to see God bless. But who needs God to answer a prayer in your life? You come here on Wednesday night, you need God to answer a prayer. Hold up a hand so I can see. I know it's Bible study, but you need God. You came here. A lot of guests are here. You need God to answer a prayer. Hold up your hand. Let's just lift our hands. Lord, I'm not worthy to preach to these people. Thank you for them taking the time on their busy schedule to be here. Let anointing miracles and touch these people that have taken time out of their busy schedule to be in the house of the Lord in the midst of Houston and so much traffic they fought to get here. But thank you, Lord, for anointing them. Y'all may be seated. God is speaking in Romans chapter uh, chapter 11, verse 29, and he's telling the Romans who are largely not of the children of Israel, he's teaching the church, the original Orthodox Jew is not the friend of the Christian ideology. But he was telling them, but don't get an attitude because of that. They're still my children. They may be prodigal, but they're still mine. They're mine because I said they're mine. And he says this in verse 26. So all of Israel shall be saved, it is written. They shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And for this is my covenant unto them. When I shall take away their sins as concerning the gospel, their enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election. That they are beloved for the Father's sake and for the gifts and calling of God are simply without repentance. You see, when you delegate this text over such a mediocre thought, you limit the intensity of this text on midweek service. Because God is not t- taking the time in the middle of his discourse about the children of Israel. Though they did not embrace Christ, still being elect to stop and say, They may be talented, but they're still sinners. That's not what he's saying. What God is saying is, I'm going to deal with them. I'm going to bring them back and deliver. Is going to come and reform them and salvage them because he said, I have unfinished business with them. He said, gifts and callings are without repentance. He said, that means if I've called you, I won't change my mind. This is not about you. This is about me, he was telling them. If I give you my word, I'm going to do something. I'm not taking my word back. If I give you a gift, I'm not taking my gift back. If I call you to do something, I won't take my calling back because because gifts and callings are without repentance of God. You see, God's gifts and callings are under full warranty. They're never canceled. They're never rescinded. It's sovereign. It's unchangeable. It's absolute because he is God, correct? If you ask Noah, you can't drink enough, Noah, in Scripture, to rescind the calling of God upon your life. Ask Lot in Scripture, You can't sin so bad that he will rescind his calling upon your life. You see, because when God has blessed you, you don't have to worry about him changing his call. You don't have to worry about him doing something different. Yes, he may chastise you, and he may chastise your life because of the circumstances you have chosen. But it does not mean that he's going to change his calling upon your life. Church of Katie, I'm not saying you won't be punished. You will be grossly punished for when we do wrong. God didn't say just because your calling is without repentance and I'm not changing my mind that I won't punish you. He's not saying if you don't make mistakes and do stupid things uh, that he won't chastise you because he will. But it does not mean that he will change his mind. The chastening of the Lord can be brutal. It can be. It can leave you sour. But he will not change his mind just because he chastises you. Lord, teach me not to change when the people I love change. Did you hear me? Don't let me become act like them when their behavior gets out of hand. Lord, help me to stay where I need to stay. You could lose your dignity, Lord. 
but Lord everybody around me could mess up but don't let me lose my dignity you see I am serving an immutable God my God does not change my God is the same today tomorrow and forever he is immutable we are mutable people but he's an immutable God he does not change he is who he is and he always will be who he is help me as I'm building I'll get there Takes me a little while sometimes, especially on Wednesday night. Help me to be steadfast and unmovable and stable. Teach me how to be the I am that you have called me to be, God. I am created and to be, not to allow other people to bring me down because they go down. When God has a calling on your life, you may be mutable and you may make mistakes, but you serve an immutable God. We will pass away. Things in our life will go wrong, but we serve a God that's the same. And our prayer should be when we walk in the house of the Lord, Lord. Lord, I may make mistakes, but I serve a God that does not change. I may fail you, Lord, but I serve a God that does not change. I may struggle, Lord, but I serve a God that does not change. You see, my God is immutable in his essence. The word mutable means he will not mutate. Am I correct? He will not change. My God's not going to change. He's not going to evolve into something else. In his essence, in his being, my God is immutable, right? God cannot grow, correct? He cannot diminish because he will never change. In his essence, he will never be reduced. He is sovereign. In his essence, he is God. The whole world can go to hell around you, but my God is still God. <laughs> Some of you see where I'm going with this. I'm going to teach somebody something tonight. He cannot be reduced and not be increased. He cannot be reduced, but he also cannot be increased because he is the rock. So that means if hurricane whatever comes and drains Houston and we fight all hell, it's hot 105 degrees one month and we have a hurricane the next month and we go through marriage trouble the next month and we fight COVID the next year, my God is still the same God. When he is immutable, he's the God of the good times and he's the God of the bad times. He's the God of your highs and he's the God of your lows. He does not change when you're on top of the mountain or when you're in the valley. The joy of the Lord is still my strength. He was perfect when he started. He was absolute in his majesty. Time will not change him because my God is eternal in a world that's wishy-washy and is changing their minds. People fight over politics. People fight over all these issues, all the stuff that's going on in the world today, which I'm not going to get into. He does not change because time will not change him because he is eternal. You will grow old, but my God will not. God does not live in time. He lives in eternity, and he stands above time. So I'm trying to preach somebody in the midst of the world's mess today. Don't get discouraged. Don't get bitter, and don't get angry, but Put your hands in the air and say, guess what, devil? I serve an immutable God. The world may be a mess, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I serve a God that's the same today, and he'll be the same when I take my last breath. He is unchangeable. He will not be mutated by your... Listen to this. This is free charge. He will not be mutated by your circumstances. He's already made up his mind. It is what he says it is. And his, his, he is immutable in his attributes. Whatever God can do, he could do, he still can do. Am I correct? Did you hear me, friend? Whatever he could do, he still can do. Whatsoever God was, he is and will be. Am I correct? His attributes remain the same. That means his power will not diminish over time. If he was a healer, then he is still a healer. If he was a provider, honey, he's still a provider. If he was a way maker, he's... 
I'm trying not to preach. I'm trying not to get excited, but I'm trying to tell somebody, you don't need to hold your head down. You don't need to get discouraged, but you need to walk in here with a smile on your face and let every devil in hell know, I serve an immutable God. I serve a God that is, a God that was, and a God that always will be. He is the same today and forevermore, and that's all I need to pray. Front row, lady. If he could part the Red Sea, then he can still part the Red Sea. Is that correct, sweetheart? If he could raise the dead, he can still raise the dead. If he could turn water into wine, he can still turn water into... Is that really true? There is nothing God could do that he still cannot do. So why are we walking into the house of God with our heads held down, feeling sorry for ourselves, saying, woe is me, but we should walk inside of here and say, my God is immutable. I may pass away, but he... So I'm going to come in here with a smile on my face and say, look what the Lord is getting ready to do for me. He's getting ready to raise me. He's getting ready to raise. You know, I was talking to somebody. I see Matt Litton back there. Maybe it was him. I don't know. He was taking a picture down of me by the ocean in Galveston or the Gulf, whatever you want to call it. You Southerners know what I'm talking about. And I had him take a picture. I said, man... Stand back, make me look good. Because our attributes diminish as we get older. So I, next year, if you take a picture of me and Brother Linton, you're going to have to step another five feet back. Because I'm getting uglier as I get older. Some of us are wearing glasses that weren't wearing glasses before. Hello. Some of us have dentures. No offense against you. Because what was isn't anymore. Am I correct? That's we, some of us are losing our hair. And most of us are going to get wrinkles because you have a lot of things that were that are not anymore. But whatsoever God was, he is and will always will be. So when my body gives out, my God is still the same God. When I can't see, my God is the same God. When all hell attacks my home, my God is the same God. You should walk in here and put a smile on your face and say, my God is immutable. I'm not going to power. I'm not going to be sad, but I'm going to smile. Am I doing a good job of staying calm on Bible study night? I'm not doing it, am I? You know what? He is immutable in his counsel. People will tell you. You know how many times I have people tell me this? Well, God told me. <laughs> I sit back and I smile and I wait. Because I know if God told you, it's going to happen. But if it didn't, it's going to make you look stupid because that means God didn't tell you. Because my God's counsel does not change. If he told you to come, he's going to have you come. If he told you to preach, he told you to preach. If he told you to shut your mouth, you better shut your mouth. His counsel does not change, which means your purpose does not change. What he has planned for your life, he has planned for your life. I'm telling you right now, you got to make up your mind to open up your ears and listen to this immutable God. Listen Listen to this God that it does not evolve. He does not change. He does not become different. He's the same God today that he was 2,000 years ago. He's just. You need to put a smile on your face and say, you got this. 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 Because you, you are God. You see, a lot of people struggle with this. And I haven't even got to the good stuff yet. So i got to keep going. If we created you with something in mind. He will not create you. Well, I think I'm going to change, O'Rourke. I made you. You were born in foster care. I was born in a mess. I came. I was a mess before I was even conceived. Because I was born. But God doesn't change his mind. He knew what was going to happen. His method may change. But his counsel does not change. What God used to do with the blood of the bullocks and the goats, right? He now does with the blood of Jesus Christ. The redemption does not change. If he created you for a purpose, the purpose remains the same. Whether you're in the hog pen or in the palace, God's plan for you is the same. Whether you're in the prison like Joseph or you're in Potiphar's house, God's plan for you does not change. Whether you feel like you're on top of the world or you feel like you're on the bottom of the world, God's plan does not change. Whether Potiphar's wife lies on you 
and are not if God told you you were blessed when it's all over you are still blessed he may have to reroute you to your destination but the destination remains the same I think I've already said enough to get somebody's attention here. I've already preached enough and hadn't got to the good stuff. You need to know who you are. You're a one God apostolic, tongue-talking child of God, serving an immutable God. So when the world comes against you, put a smile on your face. When the doctor gives you a bad report, put a smile on your face. Thank you, whoever said that. I'll pay you later. Job said... Though he slay me, I will trust in him. That's so much easier said than done, in it, honey? When he slays me, but I know I'm going to arrive. It may be rerouted, but I'm going to get there. Your circumstances does not change his purpose because his purpose is absolute. You might want to write that down in your little book. Your circumstances does not change his purpose because his purpose is absolute. So when I got sick in my body and having a nerve disease and couldn't get out of bed for months in northeast Arkansas and couldn't preach the word and couldn't knock a door and the doctors didn't know if I was ever going to walk again, does that mean God's purpose changed? No. He's the same God and he had the same plan. I just got to realize... I'm mutable, but I serve a mutable, immutable God. So everything's going to be all right. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what tomorrow's going to bring. Ooh. When Moses, let me just make this simple. When Moses started running away in Scripture, and I didn't even read about this because of time, the Hebrew children, the Hebrew children, they rejected him. He loved them, but the Hebrew children didn't have much love for Moses. Moses, having, he loved the children. His mama was Hebrew. His daddy was Hebrew. But Moses' experience was Egyptian. You always want what you didn't get. Moses gets a little frustrated, gets a little angry, has some things go wrong in his life, gets a little mad, gets a little defensive of a Hebrew man, and, and obviously commits murder by killing an Egyptian. And Moses goes on the run. He runs away from Egypt, crosses the desert through the waters to Midian, and he hides in Jethro, Jethro's house, amongst the Midianites. Well, why are you sharing this with us on a Wednesday? I'll tell you why. For 40 years, Moses disappears. For 40 years, the pastor of the Old Testament church was backslid. All because he allowed circumstances to get the best of him. Sometimes we allow things to get the best of us. God's plan doesn't change, but we make things a lot harder on ourselves because we make decisions in our flesh and instead of in the spirit. Stop trying to figure God out in your flesh and learn to walk in the house of the Lord and say, I don't like what's going on around me. But instead of running somewhere, I'm going to get down on my knees and call on the name of Jesus. Instead of running across town, I'm going to lift up my hands and say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of... Somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Somebody let the enemy know I serve an immutable God. I'm mutable. I'm passing away. My life is a mess, but he's still God. 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 I'm, I'm getting older. You know, I love good church stories. I love to tell stories about outreach things that happen. But the older I get... I get so excited about the word that I want to preach the word almost more than I want to tell you a good story about outreach. Because I love the word. Because Moses spoke in the Egyptian language. He was educated in the Egyptian school. He passed himself off as if he were Egyptian. But now he dwelt amongst the Midianites. For 40 years amongst the Midianites, he ate there. 40 years he slept there. He met a woman in Midianite, in Midian. And he married there. He married one of the daughters of Jethro. Her name was Zipporah. And she gave birth to him two beautiful children. Why are you telling us this? So Moses, backslidden preacher of the Old Testament, goes to Midian. 
hides out in Jethro's house, finds a beautiful lady named Zipporah, marries her. They have two beautiful children. He gets a job, and life is good. So hold it. If he's called of God, and he's a backslidden preacher per se, and he's hiding out in Midian, then why in the world are things so bad if he's got a new wife, he's got beautiful children, he's got a good job, and he'd become part of the Midianite community? So things must be good, right? He had success, but success is irrelevant to purpose. You hear me in the back row? Thank you, brother, back there. I see you. Success is irrelevant to purpose. Just because you have a job, just because you got money in the bank and driving a good car does not mean you're in the will of God, sweetheart. Just because you're doing what you want doesn't mean you're in the will of God. God has a purpose for your life. You may be broke. You may be poor. Your home may be falling apart. But you might be in the will of God more than having money, having a car, having a... Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. You better get in this church. You're serving an immutable God. You better make up your mind. Come hell or high water. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going. Get this inside of you. Alicia, I'm not going to embarrass you, but I can't help it. Can I tell a little bit about it? Alicia, you got MS, don't you? They're going to find out. You got multiple sclerosis. Alicia hadn't been to church till this revival started for over a year. She's sitting at home. Got MS, COVID, all the fears that go along with it. I called her on the phone asking her about outreach. I invited her to church. I said, you need to come back. She said, what about COVID? What about this? I said, what about COVID? What about this? What about that? It's time to come back. I said, you can't lock yourself up forever. I said, your body's going to pass away, whether it's by COVID, heart, or cancer, or something else. But when you serve an immutable God, eventually you've got to come out of your closet and make your way back to the house of God and have a little thing called faith. Do you know who you are? Do you know what your name is? I'm a one God. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. You got to get up, up. You got to get up, 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 get up. You know, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You think I'd be a little bit tired. Preach at six o'clock, preach now. Well, I didn't have to preach Sunday night because we shouted it down. I'm going to preach Sunday morning. I don't know what schedule is for Sunday, but I'm sure I'm doing one of them at least. But for 40 years, he lived amongst the Midianites. He ate there. He slept there. He met a wife there. He's having a good time. And it's possible to be successfully wrong. God told Joshua, Joshua, I'm going to back this. Can I have about seven or eight minutes? Is that okay? Are you sure? Tell me because I need to know because I don't know how y'all do things around here. He's left me all alone. It's my show, baby. I'm in here, baby. And we're going to let the devil know that we serve an immutable God. And we're going to have revival on Wednesday. We're going to have it on Thursday. We're going to have it on Sunday. Somebody's going to get healed. Somebody's going to get delivered. Katie, I was telling somebody, I got to hurry. I got 10 minutes. I got to cover a lot still. I said, man, I feel like I'm right at home. I don't remember feeling like this the last time I came here. I mean, these people, y'all been treating me so great. People, I just love this place. God told Joshua, I want you to have good success. Is that right? He, the key word is good. So that means my little brain, my little lowly, simple brain from St. Louis, Missouri, realized that that means there must be bad success. What kind of success do you have? If your success doesn't bring you in God's purpose, it can be bad. Oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost. Bad success. You can be, honey, you don't want to hear this, do you, sweetheart? You can be successfully wrong. 
Moses is successfully wrong. He's tending in Midian when all of a sudden after 40 years, sitting out in front of a nice sunny day, having a nice cup of sugar tea, sitting out getting a suntan, watching his two little kids swim in the pool, and God shows up. What? The bush, we've heard about it preached a million times. You're getting ready to hear it a million and one, but you have, I'm going to preach a little bit different, sweetheart. Don't worry. Don't worry. I ain't going to preach it like everybody else does. Stick with me. This is good. I promise you. You want to use this sometime. I want you to understand something. God showed up. God showed up on the scene. He's out there drinking him some sweet tea, telling his wife sweet nothings, watching his two little babies swim in the baby pool, and here comes God. But life is good. Good and wrong. The bush, if I hear the bush preached about one more time, I'm going to lose my sanity. I don't want to be offensive, and I know I'm saying this in a big church, but there are a lot of people that don't preach the point of it. They spend so much time on the bush at the expense of the message. They spend so much time talking about bush. Let me tell you something. We're in Houston where it's 105 degrees every day, right? If you see a bush catch on fire here or in that matter in the desert in the middle of Arizona somewhere, it's not a big deal. Bushes burn all the time. So what's the big deal about some burning bush? Because the bush is not the message. It's the vehicle that carries the message. When you really belong to God, you will set something on fire. God will set something on fire to get your attention. Am I correct? I'm telling you, I'm going to help somebody right now. Because we, I'm going to help somebody right now. I promise you. And he will let it burn. The bush is burning, which is not unusual. Because in the desert, bushes always catch fire. Are bushes mutable? Yes, they are. Just like you. I don't care how beautiful you think you are. And you may be a beautiful young lady. Or you may be a handsome man. But I hate to bust your little bubble. You're mutable. That bush was mutable. In other words, it would have burnt out long before it did. But there was something on the inside of that bush that was immutable. It was the fire of God. The bushes on fire is not amazing. But what's amazing is that the immutable God was inside of this bush that caused this old bush to be on fire. I'm preaching to somebody. When you get the fire of the Holy Ghost inside of you, when you get the anointing of God inside. Oh, I'm telling you, this will preach. When you get God inside of you, when your body gives out, you still got God. When hell attacks you, you still got God. When you can't pay your bills, you still got God. When you're tired, you still got God. When your wife walks out on you, you still got Somebody lift up your voice and let the enemy know. This old carcass is going to pass away, but i got fire in me. I've got anointing in me. I've got revival in me. I've got deliverance. I know this may be not a typical Wednesday night message. But I don't have Sunday. I don't, I'm not a Bible study teacher. He'll probably can me after this. You ain't doing that no more. You're too excited. What God Moses' attention was not that the bush was burning. It was that it was not consumed. The reason the bush was not consumed, because an immutable God was in the midst of this bush. From an immutable God gets in the midst of a mutable bush, it will stop it from being consumed. Because when... <laughs> Oh, this is what I'm called to do. I'm not just an outreach guy. I like the word. I love the word. Because every time the devil tells me I'm mutable, I tell him, but I serve an immutable God. Every time he tells me I'm a failure, I tell him I got fire inside of me. I got anointing inside of me. I got revival. Oh, I'm preaching. You got to let the devil know who you are. What you're... Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let him know who you. (laughs) 
when Moses said, let me tell you something. If an immutable God gets in the midst of this, the bush is being regenerated. It was designed to be mutable, right? But when an immutable God gets in it and defies its own laws, the bush never burnt up. It kept on burning. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Am I the only one or am I just nutty? I might be half nutty, but I feel it up here. So you want me to tell you why? Because this old boy's been through hell and back. The devil's left me for dead many times. I should have been dead. I should have overdosed on drugs. My life has been a mess. But when you get the Holy Ghost inside of you, every time the devil tells you you're a goner, I say I may be a goner in the flesh, but I ain't a goner in the spirit because I got a God up inside of me. I said I got a God up inside of me that will never change. He will never revive. He will never leave because he is God. Two minutes, is that all right? I hear you back there, brother. I hear you. What's that burning bush in your life? Could it be that God's trying to get a fire up inside of you? You can enjoy success and desires of the world. But when Moses saw the bush was burning, he kept on walking. Okay, it's another burning bush in the hot Arizona sun or Texas, southwest Texas sun or whatever you want to call it. But then he's like, hold it. Uh, That thing's been burning a long time and it ain't going nowhere. Maybe. And the Bible says that when he saw it was not consumed, he turned aside to look at it. The wonder was, how can it be on fire so very long? Because when God gets a fire inside of you, nothing can burn it out. Nothing can burn it out. Nothing can burn it out. When a doctor tells you negative, you say everything's going to be all right. When hell attacks your home, everything's going to be all right. When you're struggling, everything's going to be all right. Because I have a Holy Ghost burning up inside Somebody make a joyful noise in this building right now. I know it's Wednesday night, but somebody let the enemy know. I serve an immutable God in Katy, Texas. I serve a God that does not change. I serve a God that will always be. He will always be. He will always. We ain't supposed to be having that. Go ahead. Keep going, sis. We ain't supposed to be having that. We're going to have revival around here. And we've been working too hard. We serve an immutable God. I'm getting ready to close. Moses, I'm the God of your father. What? But I'm over here in the Midianites. Whatever. We, they haven't, I haven't heard from you in 40 years. I've been reindoctorated. I'm worshiping another God now. Asteroth or whatever you want to call it. The queen of heaven. That's who they worshipped. So God shows up. And he says, I'm still your God. I'm the God of Abraham. But Moses like, hey, I hadn't heard from you in 100,000 years. I'm over here having a party, drinking sweet tea. We worship a different God now. Hey, listen, I understand that God's silent for 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. I understand that God can be silent for years at a time. But God, hey, yes, he was saying, hey, Moses, I know you've been serving some other gods. But those things are all mutable, sweetheart. All the gods of the world will pass away. But I am the one true God. So you better wake up and realize who I am. That God will die. die. Your gods of this world will die. Your job will die. Your health will die. The sports figures will die. But I will last eternal because I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am omniscient. I am holy. I am righteous. I am the one, the true, and the only We got a music person in this building real quick. Anybody? He told me to ask Brother Wilson. Anybody do music? I know we got five million of them. Somebody come up here and get ready. There you go. Okay, thank you. I got unfinished business with you. I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. That's what he told Moses. I'm the God of your father. 
and I'll be the God of your children. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. I wasn't raised in this thing. I ain't got any family in this thing. I can get distracted. I had all sorts of things come against me. But I want my children to know the God that's inside of me is the same God that's there when I feel good and when I don't feel good. He's the same God that's there when everything's going good or when everything's going bad or when people in the church offend me or when they hug my neck. I'm not going anywhere. I've come too far to turn back now. I am a child. Get your foot on the rock. Stay, 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 stay. Moses said, I'm God of Abraham. Take off your shoes for the ground you stand on is holy. Huh? Take off your shoes. Well, let me tell you something. That ground before he got there wasn't holy. It was just a desert, right? But when God showed up, he made it holy. Before I got here, it wasn't holy. But the minute I showed up, it's holy. I'm preaching to somebody right now. you got to make up your mind. I walked in here in distress, but this is getting ready to be holy ground. I walked in here frustrated, but this is getting ready to be holy ground. I walked in here angry, but this is getting ready to be holy ground. I walked in here confused, but this is getting ready to be holy ground. Take off your shoes. Take off your shoes and worship. Why did I preach this? Because when you serve an immutable God who doesn't evolve and doesn't change, and I'm a mutable being, I will pass away. When I was a child, and I'm shutting up right here, six years old, living in foster care, laying in a foster care bed with a bunch of other kids crying because I knew I was getting ready to be shipped off to another house. I'm not one of these preachers. Oh, Sister McKee. I'm not one of these preachers that walk in and say, God, I see angels everywhere. <laughs> these, these cats that see angels every week. I'm like, dude, I wish I was you. I don't ever see angels. I ain't holy enough, I guess. But I saw an angel, I promise you. And it touched my foot and said, God has got you. I don't know the exact words. I'm six for crying out loud. But I remember sitting there. But for years after that, I went through abuse. I went through neglect. I went through all physical sexual abuse. I'm not trying to, I know what it is. You don't have preachers come through here like this. I'm a unique dude. I've been through a lot in my life. I can't say I was going to be an NBA basketball star. Though I played, I was a five-star football player, but five-star school. But but I don't have some crazy story like that. But I do have this. I went to a wedding in ninth grade. Remember that angel appeared to me? Immutable God has got gotcha. you. But this old mutable body for the next several years was miserable. I go to a wedding in eighth or ninth grade. Oh, they sing a choir, and there's people like you there, Sister McKee, that can sing. And I didn't know who God was, but I remember grabbing on to that at a wedding. I don't know what kind of wedding it was, but I held on to the pew crying as a kid because I felt something. And that immutable God said, I got gotcha. you. I went home and my foster parents said, don't you know they're nutty, they're crazy, they're weird, they're a cult. Five years later, God fills me with the Holy Ghost and one of your kind of churches and baptizes this old body, this mutable body with the immutable God when he filled me with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lifted up my hands and I spoke in other tongues. I'm hurrying, I gotta shut up. But then there were people in the church that wanted to run me off because I didn't have a car. I was a runaway from an abusive situation. South St. Louis, big city, no car, no job, don't have the right clothes. There are people that actually went to the pastor and said, we got to run him off because he's going to try to hook up with one of our girls and I'll get him pregnant. I'm just being honest. 
I'm like, God, I, I don't want to be around these people. And God spoke to me again. And he said, son, you're living in a mutable world. People are evil. Things will come and go. Life will come and go. But I'm the same God that filled you with the Holy Ghost. I'm the same God that sent that angel. I'm the same God that touched you in eighth grade. I'm the same God. Come hell or high water. I am immutable. I do not change. I do not evolve. I'm the same today and forever. Evermore, I am. Sorry, it's Wednesday. I preach my passion, but I'm serving an immutable God. So that means when you get the fire of the Holy Ghost in you, you speak in other tongues, you allow the immutable God inside of you. When your body gives out, when you go through health problems, when your husband walks out on you, when the doctors come against you, when friends turn against you, when fear tries to come against you, when people in the church gossip about you, when you get discouraged, you can look up to the heavens and let the devil know, but I got a fire up inside of me. I got a fire up inside of me. I serve a God that does not change. He's the same today. He doesn't change. I'm done. Moses was not impressed with that bush because who cares about the bush? We've bushes burn all the time. But Moses couldn't get past that fire. How come that bush isn't going out? That fire should have consumed that bush an hour and 20 minutes ago. And he's like, how in the world is that not going out? Because when the fire of God gets inside of you, it never burns out. It never goes away. He's immutable. It never. He can take mutable things and make them immutable. He can take mutable things and make them immutable. I'm preaching to somebody. Wake up. You serve a God. Wake up. Wake up. He is... So something that should have been burnt up in about five minutes kept burning and burning because the fire was up inside of that. There's an immutable God that's come inside of this building that said the devil's tried to burn you up in five minutes with a mutable situation. But if you'll start worshiping God, an immutable God will come inside of you and it'll never burn up because the fire will get you so strong. The anointing will get you so strong that you will have authority and dominion over anything that you face. I know we're not supposed to have altar call on Wednesday night, but I don't know how to teach Bible study. I ain't good at that yet. I'm just a preacher. I told you I love the word. I'm not just a testimony guy. Immutable. If you're going through a struggle in your life, you need God to answer a prayer. Why would you want to go back out and get your car, an immutable car that you could kill and get killed in an accident? Why would you want to go back to a mutable job that can disappear? Why would you want to go back to a broken relationship that the man can walk out on you without allowing an immutable God to come inside of you? You need God to answer any kind of prayer. Hold up one hand right now. Some of you are already gathering up here. I want you to come in close right now. Come in. Yep. Come in close. Come in close quickly, please. You can't do it back there, honey. You got to get up here. You got to get up here. Lift up your hands to heaven right now. I want you to begin to ask God to forgive you. Forgive your mutable being. Lord, I make mistakes. I doubted you. My circumstances got the best of me. But I'm getting ready to worship. As Sister McKee sings, lift up your hands to heaven right now. Lift up your hands. Please. For we repent. And after you repent, begin to worship. Begin to allow the Holy Ghost to come on your home. Take off your spiritual shoes up here. I'm not telling you you have to take your shoes off. But spiritually, take your shoes off. You're standing on holy ground. On holy ground. My home may be under attack, but I'm in it's I serve an immutable God. And I may be fighting. I know that there are angels all around. 
Come in, it's cold coming, brother. Come on closer. God's getting ready to do a miracle for you right so now. I want you to lift your hands to heaven right now. Ask God to forgive you. I'm stressed out. I'm tired. That's it. Lay your hands on him, brother. Come on. Let's lay our hands on this man. I'm tired. But God's getting ready to do a miracle for me right now. I want you to open up your mouth and begin to praise him right now. Let's pray him through right now. Come on, let's pray him through. Let the Holy Ghost. Angels are surrounding this altar. I feel it. Don't leave him till he gets the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands to heaven right now in the name of Jesus right now. Let the Holy Ghost come on you right now. Because I'm going to tell you right now, your bodies are, immu- are mutable. Those a- things that angered you are mutable. Those things that got you bitter are mutable. And the devil will try to destroy you through them. And he's bringing curses against your home. But when you lift up your head to heaven and you begin to say, Enemy, I've got to let go of this anger. i got to get let go of this pain right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, sister, it's time to come home. It ain't worth it out there. You're losing your family. You're losing people. You got friends, they don't care about you. As soon as things start going bad, they're gonna leave you. You better wake up and realize who you are. You can run, but you can't hide. All right now, lift up your hands to heaven. Lift up your hand to heaven right now. You're making decisions that will affect the rest of your life. Let go of me right now. Let go of me. Let's just open up your mouth and begin to repent. Begin to repent. God loves you. I'm not here to judge you. God loves you. I love you. And God's getting ready to do a miracle for you, sweetheart. That's it. I'm tired of this stress. I'm tired of this pain. The devil wants to kill my family, but get off of us. Get off of us. Come on. I need some prayer warriors. That's it. That's it. Pray for it right now. That's it. Pray for it. That's it. God's doing the work right here. God's doing the work right here. God's doing the work. Come here, sis. Come on. God's doing the work right here. Get off of me. Somebody's coming home tonight. Somebody's coming home. Yes. Yes. I thought I must open up your mouth. Sir, you better open up your mouth. The devil wants to, I'm telling you, there's an attack against your home. He'd like to, he'd like to end your life without God. I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of anti-God. Go ahead, that's it, go ahead. Let it go right now. That's it. Go ahead. I need some prayer warriors right here. I need some prayer warriors. Can I get somebody who knows how to pray? Come up here right now. Somebody that knows how to pray. Come up here real quick. Come on up here. Lay your hand on this lady right now. I want you to bind every attack against this home right now. That's it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thou art loose right now. Let go. That's it. Open up your mouth and speak it out. Speak it out. That's the Holy Ghost coming out of you right now. Yes, 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 yes. Let it out of you. Let it out of you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't stop. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. So lay your hand on her forehead right now. That's it. Lay your hand on her forehead right now. That's it. That's it. That's it. Get off of me. 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 
Come here, come here, young lady. God's going to do work. That's it. I want you to lift your hands to heaven right now. Come on, and immutable God's getting ready to break loose inside of you. That's it. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. That's it. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of I want you to lift your hands up to heaven, sister, right now. You're making decisions that's going to pass on to this child right now. You're thinking about walking away. You're thinking about walking away from God, going back to that world, that, that fun world, that party life, that world that feels so good to the flesh. But I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, that all will pass away. Get inside of here. Ain't nobody out there worth losing your soul over. Ain't nobody. Go ahead. That's it. I know it's Wednesday, but God's telling me some things. Let the Holy Ghost move. Let it 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 move. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Stay with it. Come here. I want you to grab his hand right now, sis. The, door, the enemy comes against you right now. And one of you may be spiritually strong, the other one may be spiritually weak, but I want to plead the blood of Jesus over you right now. Some people don't take this serious. They want to do God the way they feel comfortable doing God. They want to do God on their own terms. But if you want this home to be blessed, you've got to allow the immutable God to come down inside of you. I want you to open up your mouth and let that power come out of you right now. In the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost minister to you right now. There it is. Speak that out right now. Speak that out in the name of Jesus. Speak that out. Speak that out. Get off of me, enemy. We only want to go so far in the flesh.
find everything I need. Sitting at your feet in your presence. In your presence. No other place I'd rather be than in. Surely the prayer.